So with all the attention in 3.22 around the salvage mechanics, both recyclable components and construction salvage, the improved bunker missions and the looting mechanics, and maybe even the changes to mining that lead to a wider array of mining options for profitability. Is plain and simple cargo hauling still a viable gameplay option? Can you make competitive money hauling cargo? Is it worth your time? How risky is it? Is it even any fun given all these other things you can do? Well, I'm gonna talk about all that in this video right now. To do this breakdown of cargo hauling, I'm gonna go right down the middle. And I won't be talking just about the best ships or cargo or how to make a million alpha UEC an hour or anything like that. I'm gonna be talking about the average experience, which is far more representative of reality than a specific use case and is a better match for the average or newer player. But I will be touching on both extremes for comparison, both the very small light freighter and the supersized cargo ships. With that, here was my situation. I wanted to buy a bigger cargo ship, and what I had was a Cutlass Black. The Cutlass is considered a medium-sized hauler in the game, holding 46 SCU. And you can argue whether or not it actually falls in the middle of small and large, but it was also a good test ship because the Cutlass is one of the ships you can rent in the game at many locations and is a common ship for people to rent along with a rented prospector to help acquire an initial stack of credits. The Cutlass is also extremely affordable to buy, both with real money and with in-game money, and has always been represented as a great value for the price. So even though it probably isn't technically a starter ship, it is a popular one that people start with in the game or one of those more easily acquired ships for people on an upgrade path. I had about $400,000 to go to be able to buy the Freelancer Max and wondered how difficult would it be to earn that money just doing cargo hauling with a modest ship. Now, here again, I didn't want to just go for the cargo type that would return the maximum money per unit. I wanted it to be more representative. Because there are only a handful of commodities that offer that max return, everyone goes for those. And often it's with players that have a large hauler like a Caterpillar, C2 Hercules, or other large capacity ship. So those commodities can either be all bought out when you get to the outpost, or be of such low inventory that you wind up with a partial load and with an elevated buy price that cuts into your profits. So I started out small and ran one of my favorite commodities, Distilled Spirits. Distilled Spirits seems to produce fairly quickly at about a half a dozen different locations and can be sold almost everywhere, which means you can get away with traveling relatively short distances and making several runs in a short amount of time. So that's what I did. I started running Distilled Spirits. It made a little over 6,000 per run, very steadily. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but because of the convenience of being able to sell them at a lot of locations, I could do several runs an hour, and with a little hustle, could make about 25,000 an hour. That's pretty reasonable profit. That's not too far off from the money you make with one of the introductory salvage missions. Between removing the RMC, yanking off components and storing them in the ship, deconstructing and gathering up the hull, and maybe even getting a little cargo from the salvage, I would usually make a little bit more from the salvage depending on the ship, but it wasn't too far off. And the time commitment was also roughly about the same. Now, I'm not really trying to compare the cargo running in terms of profitability with other gameplay, but I did notice the correlation, so I thought it was worth noting. After a bunch of these distilled spirit runs spreading booze all over the solar system, I decided to change it up a little bit and started hauling a little bit more expensive and profitable cargo. What I went for was barrel. The distilled spirits could be bought for a little over 400, filling up my ship for right around 20,000, a reasonable investment. Barrel, on the other hand, was costing me at least two and a quarter thousand with a total cost of 102,000 to fill up my Cutlass Black, a much more hefty investment that also carried a more hefty risk with each load. There was also other pluses and minuses with the barrel. The plus side is that I was now making 23,000 
per trip rather than 6,000 per trip. But the downside of that is that I had to travel to one of the major trade stations, which meant I could only do two loads at most if I was lucky. It still wound up being more profit than the distilled spirits, almost double, but I was taking on the higher risk with each trip, and I liked it. The fun part about the distilled spirits was making all these rapid jumps, quick landings and takeoffs, and getting this sense of hustle in the game. The distilled spirit delivery also gave me a chance to do a little quick looting at some of the outposts, where I could usually find a little food and water to keep me going, and occasionally pick up some gear I could sell for a few extra credits. One of those things I picked up, I'll share at the end, and it was rather surprising. I got a very different feel when running barrel. It was less about a sense of urgency, and more about caution and looking over my shoulder to try to avoid pirates. I would always try to pre-select my jump point before leaving an outpost safe zone. When I would approach a city like Lorville or Area 18, there's a zone where you come out of quantum but aren't yet quite in the city's safe zone. So there was always this push on the throttle to get well within that city safety, and again, avoid any unwanted attacks. So even though it was all still cargo running, I realized I got two very different sensations from running the lower value cargo versus the higher value cargo. But my experimentation didn't end there. I decided to end off my quest for earning 400,000 alpha UEC by trying one or two runs of that top tier expensive cargo I talked about. I decided to run gold. Now, there's only a couple outposts that actually sell the gold and I half expected to get there and either find it drained, very low on inventory, perhaps another player already there waiting at the console for more gold to generate, and maybe even a space pirate lurking nearby, waiting to pounce on a cargo hauler leaving the outpost to get some free goodies. None of that happened. Well, sort of. The inventory of gold was very low, but because I was using the Cutlass Black, there was enough for me to adequately fill up my ship. If I had had something even a little bit bigger like the Freelancer Max I'm looking to buy, I would have been left a little shy of a full run. So my earlier statements about the reality of running these higher valued commodities turned out to be true in my very first attempt. The investment was huge, 272,000 over a quarter million alpha UEC, and the majority of everything I'd earned so far was on the line, including the possible game crash that always seems to happen at the most inopportune times. But I was successful and sold my cutlass full of gold for 331,000, a profit of 59,000 alpha UEC. Very nice, but also very risky but I was a little bit short and now also had gold fever, so I went back for another shipment of gold. You're probably thinking the other shoe is going to drop in this part of the story now. Well, it almost did. As I was approaching the outpost, I saw on my radar that another ship was there. I was still pretty far out, but I decided to just leave the area because at best, he was probably buying out the last of the gold. And like I said before, waiting there for a little bit more to spawn. As I started to pull away, at 10,000 meters out, I got a radar lock, which means this person or their crew was on guard at the outpost and on the lookout for any incoming ships. And generally, that just wasn't the situation I was looking for. So I went for another barrel run, and it brought me extremely close to the 2,181 that I needed, but here came the little extra bit that I told you about. While I was at the outposts buying these goods, I did a little looting. And what I found was that these Ambrus suits sold for a whopping amount of 1,400 at the store right next to the Orson Trade Center. Now, I'm showing you this because it's in stark contrast to what these sell for over at Tammany and Sons in Lorville, another seller of clothes. There, they were a meager 390. So it really goes to show how drastically prices can change across different locations for any looted items. And I'm sure the same is probably true for personal or ship weapons, armor, and things like that. What I had now in my account was 2,181 and some change, 
almost exactly what I needed to buy the Freelancer Max. But I figured as long as I was going back to New Deal at Lorville to buy the Freelancer, I'd take one more load with me. Also because it would be nice not to be flat broke after I bought the ship. That last load I delivered was Barrel again and brought me to a comfortable 2,203. So now I was off to buy my ship, but what did I think about all this? I enjoyed it a lot. It required a little planning, a little strategy, combined risk and reward, flying around, visiting different places. And personally, I really enjoy just the flying of ships in the game. So for me, it's perfect. And the whole time, I kept being excited about all the cargo hauling I was going to do with the new Freelancer Max, which holds almost three times as much as the Cutlass. So I made 400,000 Alpha UEC in a relatively short amount of time. Enjoyed myself without it feeling like a grind. I think mainly because I was running different kinds of goods and exploring different trade routes and got to do something that almost anybody can do with most ships new or experienced. Even the Avenger Titan, as a fan favorite starter ship, could make almost 13,000 per run transporting something like the gold. And that's without having to get into the more risky illegal commodities that can send you to jail or get you killed at the lawless areas where you have to buy and sell it. So cargo trading is still alive and well. And it'll be interesting to see how cargo trading is impacted by the new physical cargo loading and unloading mechanics. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this now was so I could get a fresh experience of cargo running and be able to better compare it later after the new physical loading comes in. I hope you enjoy this video and got a fresh look at one of the oldest professions in Star Citizen. Take care and I'll see you next time.